This episode brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it, so you don't have to. Okay, I think this is the last live-action Scooby-Doo movie. Actually, there's This a... is the last live-action Scooby-Doo movie. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I like Scooby-Doo enough to talk about it several times in the series. I'm just getting a little Scooby-Dooed out. And I guess so is the franchise, because they don't even have Scooby-Doo in this one. But a lot of people have requested this, seeing how it's apparently the last live-action Scooby-Doo thing they've ever done. So I guess it makes sense to look it over. Daphne and Velma was a direct-to-video release in 2018. Why Daphne and Velma as opposed to, say, Shaggy and Fred? Presumably there's not as much slash fiction about them. Though I could be wrong. Why does she get to wear the dress? Because Shaggy doesn't have the hips for it. <laughs> I'm not really sure if this was received well, or badly, or somewhere in the middle. So I really am going into this completely blind. With that said, let's take a look at Nancy Drew and Judy Moody, I don't know, I did a Google search, and see how they pan out. This is hopefully the last live action Scooby-Doo movie, Daphne and Velma. We open with an ad for Ridge Valley High, which is in between Bayside and Lawndale for whitest sounding school name ever, owned by tech billionaire Tobias Bloom who is in between, nope, that's the whitest billionaire name ever, who's basically trying to give us a cuddlier version of Skynet. Technology isn't just a tool. Hello, Olivia. Thank you. It's a way of life. Well, they're already making the analogy of being cute garbage pretty easy. Things go weird, well, weirder pretty quick when one of the students is given a creepy message and the credits roll. Well, Whoop has gotten a lot more disturbing in summoning spies. They play some mellow music with a theremin that I actually really dig. All things considered, this is not a bad start. We're introduced to Daphne, played by Sarah Jeffrey, and Velma, played by Sarah Gilman. Screw the Daphne-Velma thing, having two girls named Sarah's already the perfect quirk for your kid's detective agency. Daphne always posts videos thinking everything connects to the paranormal, and Velma always posts messages debunking them. Aliens did not mess with that theme park, Daphne. Uh, maybe they did, Velma. We don't know. On the one hand, I thought it was weird Daphne getting into the supernatural as she never struck me as that type. But then again, she does end up living in this thing with three people and a talking dog. It does kind of check out. Velma, however, believes in everything but the supernatural, as she believes they are constantly being watched. Now that I buy 100%. They surprisingly complement each other as one sees solving mysteries as a bubbly pastime and the other sees it as a tormenting curse. Again, this is not a bad setup. I'm in Ridge Valley! Like where I live, Ridge Valley? Velma is bummed to discover, however, that their long-distance friendship is about to get a lot closer. When she discovers Daphne is transferring to her school. She's so pissed off she squashes a muffin. That bitch! Are you Daphne? The new girl? Is it that obvious that I'm new here? Not at all. I was already emailed your full profile before you got here. That's... <laughs> I'm Carol. I'll be your Stafford wife today. We travel a lot for my mom's work. She invented Matchmouth. <laughs> Wait. What? Your mom invented Matchmouth? She's the reason this goddamn song exists. Actually, Matchmouth is the name. It's a big hit app that... Their use of dog face filters for actual dogs was revolutionary. It sounds like it'd be a big hit app. At the end of each semester, whoever's the top student of the Bloom Bracket gets an internship with Bloom Innovative. Can you guys imagine getting to work for THE Tobias Bloom? You too can be the obvious villain or obvious fake-out villain. Velma seems to be avoiding Daphne, though, and she can't put together why. And then this happens. My mom. Well, you got me, movie. Clearly it's the janitor because she wanted a new mop. How are you both trying too hard and yet not hard enough? Daphne is fitting in great, but still can't figure out why Velma is avoiding her. As she makes up the exact same excuse I used to make up for running late to gym. I was just on my way to a um, sports match mm -hmm. in the sports classroom. 
Though I was more specific and said I was late to playing a game of ball ball. The lights start flickering and Daphne convinces Velma that they should look into it. It's like someone's possessing this place. How'd you get into this school again? They see one of her friends entering a locker, but weirdly enough, Daphne's father closes the door. What are you doing here? Is my leg screaming or is that just in my head? No more drugs for that man. Later that night, her dad reveals why he was there. Thought I was supposed to pick you up. <laughs> Nedley. Elizabeth. Dad. Donkey! He reveals that because he's felt so bad with them moving from place to place because of her mother's job, he's always been there getting her exactly what she wanted behind her back. And in front of her back, I'm sorry, was there any question this girl was pampered as hell? This reveal is so stupid and so weirdly forced that it sometimes works its way around to being funny again. And your chopsticks were secretly tiny forks. I designed those. We call them fork chops. Daphne is pissed though that she's literally been sheltered her whole life. He was just trying to protect you. I don't need protection, okay? I can handle myself. We spent a whole Scooby-Doo movie hammering that in with no last. We don't need another! The next day, he stops helping her out with everything, and she realizes she's not as lucky as she thought she was. Plum and sage, that's a bold color choice. Turns out my dad was my clothing closet. Yet ironically, he didn't dress me like the 70s that was my own doing? I'm sorry, is this a tech school or the friggin' future? Oh, you love aliens. I love aliens. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure they gave us this technology. I wonder if that means she's the villain! Her friend Spence, though, seems to be different after stepping into that locker the other day. You sure, Spence? Yep, no, I'm good. Yeah. Right, you said that. He's fine. Oh god, I just figured out the twist. This is all a prequel to 2019's Black Christmas. Velma once again makes things difficult for Daphne, sabotaging their project and getting them in trouble with the principal. Who it also turns out is Velma's aunt. I thought I could handle high school myself, but it turns out I can't. Did you know they give out grades lower than an A? Boy, was I the opposite. I didn't know A was a grade that existed. <laughs> the principal tries to get a new invention called the conflict couch to help him out. I don't know. And still don't believe this was inspired by slash fiction. Oh, on my hair! You're on my hair! Well, you're spitting at me! You will give what DeviantArt demands! They patch up their problems ridiculously fast. Purple and green go awesome together. They are the most popular supervillain colors. Daphne did it! And she reveals why she's been acting so odd. All the top students seem to turn into brain-dead zombies and she doesn't want to get infected. Daphne, of course, suggests solving the case together. Because I'm not budging and if you keep disagreeing with me, this weird couch is gonna ram us together for all of eternity. I expect three OnlyFans videos made using this scenario and that exact line. I will give you a commercial break to create it. Oh wait, ten of them already exist. Uh, take a break anyway. For no reason. All right, Lou, give me that chisel. We're almost out of here. I can give you something better than a chisel. Okay, what's that? DoorDash. What? What do you want to eat tonight? I don't know. I didn't think about Maybe it. Maybe you want a home-cooked favorite, but you don't feel like going to the store. Or you want something exciting and new, but it would be great to stay in tonight. Stay in any place, but here, I do not want to stay in here. DoorDash connects you with everything you want, whenever you want, and however you want. Alright, you keep talking. I'm gonna start chiseling. I hit the chisel. What? And you won't get it back till you hear about DoorDash. You have literally never been like this. Get what you want to eat right now and right to your door with DoorDash. Along with restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. We could leave in under an hour if you give me the chisel. Craving late night ice cream. Forget that one key ingredient for dinner. Or maybe you just need to stock up for the week. With DoorDash, get everything in one hour. No kidding, tell me more. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. All things 
outside. Ordering is easy and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop Gee, it's a shame you don't have a special offer. And there's a special no offer. No kidding, a special offer. For a limited time, our viewers can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code NOSTALGIA. That's 25% off up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code NOSTALGIA. Sing that song one more time. Don't forget that's code Nostalgia for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, term supply. Did I even have a cellmate? Did I imagine you? Kinda. We're both voices inside a guy's head. I might be insane. It's the special offer today. New Year means a new game to play for Disney December. I'm gonna be playing Spider Man for the PS4 every Friday on Twitch. We have content six days a week, so come check us out. Hope to see you then. decide the best way to get some answers is to go into the mysterious locker that the top students walked into. They need some spare parts to make some new gadgets though, and don't say the special didn't get out of nowhere dark. I really wish I hadn't programmed you with human emotions. Jesus! Why do we get the feeling that James Gunn script was left alone? That's the kind of humor we would get. Honestly, the special does have more laughs than I thought it would, despite the story being pretty silly, which I think is part of the course for Scooby-Doo. A lot of these actors do seem to be having fun with these lines. Hey, uh, speaking of school, how was school? With that said, they are a long way from all hitting bullseyes. Earpods create a soundtrack that is personalized to you. Oh, I'm doing the running man because I'm running to the future. My soundtrack is singing. Shut up! We're finally introduced to Tobias Bloom, who introduces his latest invention. A 3D printer. Lame, I know. <laughs> I didn't laugh at that, you laughed at that. It turns out this 3D printer though is for food, which is a pretty fun idea. Even Daphne gets into the chant of students just shouting, pizza. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Yeah, no one's looking, let's go. Pizza. God damn it special, the people want me to hate. Stop making me laugh. They break into that locker entrance with Velma's new invention. A melting engine. We can come up with something better than that. When you destroy your robot child, you can name the thing, okay? That was both funnier and more heartbreaking than all of AI. The secret passage seems to be gone and the janitor busts them, getting them sent again to the principal's office. I'm gonna have to give you girls shame stickers. Great, great. Just like in the novel, the Scarlet mm, face. They're also given kitchen duty, and they put together that the boy moving up to top student must be the main villain. Only halfway through the special, and they've revealed who did it. I'm convinced. Ooh, shame sticker. Is everything okay? Yeah, um, you said I could come to you if I needed help. Can you tell the sound effects editor that Thunderstorm did not make that joke any funnier? They have her sneak them close to listen to the boy's evil plan as they discuss what... Boys talk about? I don't really care what I do when I grow up. I just want to be like a really good dad. Dude, you will be the best dad. I mean, you're a natural nurturer. Stop making me have fun with this. There are rules. You need to try less and have a puppy piss on something. They roll away after getting nothing but find him suddenly hypnotized like the students before. Once again, they get caught before they could follow him though and they're sent again to the principal. They're given a shame drone, which literally follows them around and says for shame. I can't tell if this is too smart for its own good or too stupid for its own good. And they see the boy from earlier has also been zombified. Heads up. <laughs> Didn't flinch. Awesome, dude! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would accept this as a prequel to Black Christmas because this at least has better commentary. Seeing how the top students always get brainwashed, Daphne tries to convince Velma to elevate herself up the list so she can be bait. This means also sabotaging the other top students so they don't take the spot. I'm gonna have to push other people down. Like, sabotage them? It feels wrong. We're protecting them. For feeling bad, they sure do have some sinister smiles going on there. I was just kidding before, but maybe they are the villains. They tell themselves people are being zombified, but they're really just convincing themselves cheating's okay. They're like a manipulative cult and only the two of them are members. There's only one student ahead of them and they try to sabotage her art show by cutting the power. But someone tries to sabotage their sabotage and they follow him discovering the secret passage. Okay, these don't come with a regular high school. Somebody built these. Aliens. Your explanation for anything slightly peculiar is aliens, isn't it? A hooded figure follows them though and I know these types of chases are par the course, but 
It weirdly comes across as kind of lame in this one. <laughs> oh, she did the glasses thing. I like that because it's the glasses thing. To the credit, it doesn't last long and they discover the top student, Michaela, has been captured. It's not doing anything. They catch the hooded figure though and discover it's Daphne's dad. I knew it, he lobotomized those students just so Daphne could appear smarter. Now he once again has been keeping tabs on Daphne and things get worse when Velma accidentally activates Order 66. Yeah. Daphne. Yes. Velma? Oh, I see now they've been using the Manchurian canine a dead. It'd be easier if Scooby was in this. But the dad shuts off the device, snapping them back to normal. It didn't affect you. No. Those audio files must use a frequency that can only be heard by kids. They're speaking through stupid TikTok fads. They figure out Bloom is behind it and Daphne's mother, who of course is working for him, is in great danger. Daphne blames herself for getting everybody involved. Daphne, before you got here, I was just solving mysteries behind the safety of a computer screen. <laughs> now I'm breaking and entering. Take note, internet sleuths. They decide to sneak into Bloom Industries, and again, these jokes are so stupid, it's kind of impossible not to laugh at them. I'll just mop around this girl-shaped section with a girl's head attached because nobody watching a Scooby-Doo movie is gonna care. Insecurity. Okay, in cartoons, that's kind of cute. In live action, that is terrifying! <laughs> We should be safe at home, not on the front lines. They start hearing voices of their insecurities, which makes it an insecurity system? This must be some kind of security system. The room is feeding off our insecurities. Damn, they must have used character growth alarms. As you'd imagine, they beat it by showing they have no insecurities and by being supportive of each other. You make me believe people are okay. We are the writers of our destiny. Our intellects are our weapons. Yeah, pretty heavy handed, but I did mention this a few times and by comparison, I probably am cutting this a little bit more slack. They eventually make it to the final boss. Bloom admits he's been stealing smarter kids' brainwaves and imagination to come up with new ideas. They of course say he won't get away with it, but he sends his mechanical spiders after them, and I'm starting to see why physical comedy was not at the forefront in this one. Well, it looks like there were two obvious mysteries solved here. Who is the villain, and where did they make budget cuts at the last minute? It looks like Bloom was a hologram though, and it turns out the Steffer wife student was the real mastermind all along. You're behind all of this. Why am I not surprised? Well, again. It turns out nobody would let her run a business because of her age, so she made up Bloom to trick the world. Yeah, pretty dumb. But this has been happening for years. She's not really a teenager. <laughs> How old are you? Well, I've been told I can play anywhere between shut the hell up the cops are called, confirming we have no satisfactory climax, and they return back to school proud in their old lady clothes. I'm just glad that you're back to your old self again. Me too. Me three. Now please, I never thought I'd say this, but can you dress me more like a cartoon character so people can take me seriously? Their computer is hacked though by, I'll just say it, a pretty creepy image, and it's left on a cliffhanger what it is. Could be a real monster. Monsters aren't real. We'll see about that. Ha ha, no we won't! As of now, a sequel to Daphne and Velma has not been greenlit. And that would be weird seeing how if they made it now, they would be 26 year old meddling kids. Which the more I think about isn't that different. But for a kid-centered standalone movie? I don't know. Thought it'd be worse. There are impressively quite a few laughs in this. The chemistry between the two leads is strong and the actors all look like they're having a ball filming. With that said, yes, there are a lot of moments that fall flat, the story's pretty stupid, and there are times where I miss the rest of the gang to bounce stuff off. But for a special that absolutely didn't need to exist, I think it does its job fine. It's nothing great, but it's a decent enough distraction for an hour and a half to show your kids. And even get a giggle every once in a while for the adults. I'll admit I've just been let down so much by the other live action movies either being terrible or aggressively underwhelming that when one of them even meets the bare minimum requirements, maybe I do cut it a bit more slack. It's hard to say with such a weird franchise, but for what it's worth, I did get a few fun moments out of this. 
you just gotta get through a fair amount of the usual lame jokes to find them. I don't know, what do you think? Did it surprise you in a good way you didn't expect, or do you feel Scooby-Doo just isn't the same without, well, Scooby-Doo? Let me know your thoughts on this final live-action Scooby-Doo movie. For now. I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember, so you don't have to. My ma. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and this week's charity was another recommendation. Thank you so much. And it is for camp or Children's Association for Maximum Potential. Uh, camp's vision for all programs is regardless of the ability or disability, all campers will be uh, respected, encouraged, inspired, and celebrated during their participation in these programs. Year-round, CAMP provides recreational opportunities for individuals with medical conditions or disabilities, as well as their siblings, leadership development for high school students and young adults, and hands-on educational experiences for healthcare professionals. CAMP believes that all individuals, regardless of health, disability, or any other label that sometimes isolate, deserve the opportunity to participate in a community where they are celebrated for who they are. They believe everyone deserves a place they, uh, where they belong, where they can have fun and be allowed to grow their independence and self-confidence. So as you can see, this is a really, really cool uh, camp they got going on here and it's uh, got a lot of great people and they're doing something that's really wonderful. So please, uh, uh, click the link. Sorry, it's early in the morning, my brain. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> click the link uh, to see if it's something you want to donate to, or if you don't have money to donate to it, spread the word. Just always get it out there, the good that people are doing, because there's so many people doing so much good, and this definitely seems like a really good charity. So thank you so much, and take care.